Mopar people. Welcome back to the channel. I am Just Mopar Joe. Today we're doing the top end on our 512 big block low deck stroker that's going to the dyno soon. Let me show you what it's all about. Once again, it's a 512 kit from 440 Source. The bottom end is done. If you saw my last video, I got the windage tray put on. I got the girdle put on. I got our road race pan put on. Uh, today we're doing our MLS head gaskets, um, Trick Flow 270 heads, Comp Solid Roller Lifters, Smith Brothers Push Rods, uh, Harlan Sharp Rocker Arms, Trick Flow Track Heat Intake, and that should button it up. Uh, first things first, I got to get these decks cleaned off. Mark's coming in to help me uh, clean up some of my small parts and stuff. Get all the uh, rust coating and all that off the lifters. Uh, get them cleaned out good. Uh, rocker arms themselves, clean out the shafts. It's a little process, but it's gotta be done if you wanna keep the inside. Here's our Comatic on the engine right now. I always copper coat my Comatic gaskets. Um, Y'all can, that'd be a good discussion in the comments about who does and who doesn't. But I think it's a nice important step. This is nice and tacky, so it's ready to go. And my head itself, blown it off, wiped it off. Mark's cleaning up there. I like to be sure my oil pastures are blown out. Uh, so no matter what side this head ends up on, it will be ready to oil the rockers well, here. Currently, I've got just a couple bolts holding each head on. I'm gonna torque them down in just a minute. I wanted to show you the valley cover from trick flow part number 616-00820 and it is a lot a lot looser than the indy kind that i've done before uh indy cylinder heads so previously i went ahead and glued this dude down they do give you screws to go with it and the the little arp uh bolts that he has it look like that black anodized i think uh, the heads of them are too large and they don't fit in the countersink, so I don't think we can use them. But I think on this deal, since it's such a large gap, I'm, I'm basically filling that with RTV and I can get my hand back there. I know you probably can't see my fingers, but uh, I'll go ahead and bolt her down there, both sides, and then I'll torque my heads down. And then I can basically pipe my RTV in from the top side put me a piece of tape on the back side since it's so wide open and uh, wipe smooth here then I can pull my tape off because I have this nice uh, hole to get through here another thing to mention is you can go ahead and put your lifters in it might make life easier but since this is so nice and open they'll go right in I'm not really worried about that uh, it just depends how you want to layer stuff in you can see where I I done some marking on the outside of this when I did my port work on the intake itself to make it match this. And I've got a video on that if you want to go see it. But until then, uh, I'm going to go ahead and RTV this thing in place on both ends and get my screws in for it. Lifters are in. We did soak those for a while so the rollers and all the little bearings and everything would be nice and wet. And I came through and put a little assembly lube on where the tie bar goes. See there? And Mark is soaking our Harlan Sharp rocker arms so that we know the roller tips are well lubed before they come apart and go on the shafts. So he's going to pull them out and let them drain and drip for a little while. And then we're going to assemble them. I went ahead and put blue tape everywhere I don't want my black, ultra black RTV to be. Um, and I have a blue piece underneath connecting both those aluminum pieces. So, cut my little end, let's pipe it in. It's like a 512 cake, except faster. And I bet I can use a bunch. Might have to end up cutting my tip bigger. There we go. Now to clean up. Take 
Take one. Take two. Here it comes. And there's only a little bit on the bottom of that piece. Now I've taken a flashlight from the inside. I don't know if you can see that or not. That little bit of light means we are not sealed up right there. So I recommend checking all four corners just to be sure you are. And if you're not, fill it in. I gotta put a little more tape because I don't want black on my orange paint. And I did take the tape out from inside both sides. This is our Trick Flow Rocker Stud Big Block Mopar Kit. To fit in your holes here, and they give you the appropriate washers and nuts. So you might've noticed in the other video when I was holding you, showing you the bag, uh, there wasn't any nuts in this bag. So I got a hold of Rick Seaman. He said, this is the stuff we need to buy. 3H 12 point ARP 300-832. So we got a 10 pack now and I can finally get the rockers set up. Uh, all these have been soaked appropriately, uh, dripped dry. They're ready to go on. And then I can start setting my side clearance because if you'll remember, this is a big deal. Uh, we need a little 15 to 20 thousandths clearance gap per cylinder, bolt to bolt when it's cold. So that means between each one of these. So let's get it bolted on and then we can start playing with that. I went ahead and popped my push rods out and got these dropped on. Right now, this is my first time ever setting up Harlan Sharps on Trick Flow 270s. Uh, they are tight, tight, and I don't even have a washer or nut or anything on here. I mean, they do freely move, but um, we're gonna have to adjust that. I got it lean just a little bit so I can get down and look and see kind of how I'm centered on my valve stem tip. And if I need to go that way, I believe I have extra shims. I can just put a little smaller shim on one side or the other, uh, but just, you know, you're just kind of splitting hairs here. You want it centered left to right. And if they both look pretty good, I can always take a little bit off my center uh, large spacer there, put it together, and it would let it breathe or slightly move in both directions. I got our Harlan Sharp rockers on, torqued down, and lashed. It was pretty easy because I could just rotate the engine and see where my lifters were through my valley. So that's nice. I lash these just like I do my 512 with the comp cam. So I believe you take uh, four thousandths off because of the aluminum heads. So I just keep them marked on my feeler gauge and we're good to go. All of them look really nice. Uh, there wasn't like one that had more thread sticking up than the others or anything like that. If I get you in close here, you can see my one thread hanging out there. So all that was nice. If you saw my push rod measuring video, um, I did account for the lash caps. So I am running lash caps on this. If you can see them down in there. Beautiful. It's a good idea. Uh, some people like them, some people don't. Uh, but fairly decent, solid roller cam and all that. It also makes life a lot easier to lash the valves. Uh, so I double checked. It did move my... I can get you closer in here. There you go. It did change my roller pattern just slightly, and I think it actually changed it for the better. So all that looks good. I got clearance there for my retainer. I know it looks close on camera, but it's nice. Uh, the Harlan stuff is made to work with this. And then for shims, I'm trying to remember. Uh, see, I swapped here. I think I swapped three of these. So the whole unit itself slides back and forth to get that side play. So you want 15 to 20 thousandths. Well, I could set this one, set this one as I'm bolting them down. Then I can set this one and slide that in. So all those are beautifully perfect now. 
they're not too tight just right to go i'm going to put on my valley plate in just a second uh but i want to get my plugs in here pour my oil through the top and get this thing primed today so let's check that out all right i got seven quarts in it it's time to make rick seaman uh freak out because i still haven't made any valve covers that i have cut out to but if one side gets to flowing like i like it to then i'll stop and put his actual uh, mopar performance black valve cover on that side with a gasket and it'll be fine so here's the actual first spin good luck to us all and you got to spin backwards because it's a big block go back in time to get a big block here's some good squishes now that's hitting the floor that's nice now, not on our rockers yet. We jumped up to 25 there. 50. 75. We like it. There we are. I'm flooding the floor, am I? No. Uh oh. Always runs down at some point. That's not bad, though. We got some good oil in happening. And especially down our push rod ends, like right there. If you will recall, I took my track heat intake and I ported it out to the max wedge size or very, very, very close to it. And I was using these other gaskets uh, that actually were on their old or, uh, 580. And they are max wedge size. I'm assuming this is the, uh, the fail pro number, whatever they are. Um, and I think they're 60,000 thick. I measured them a while back. I got on, uh, I believe Mancini and ordered these, the Hughes Printo seals. So I can trim my port size to exactly what I want. Um, this gives you a lot more meat through here as well. I know it doesn't matter because, uh, you know, your intake is going to cover that. Uh, but see where, you know, even here where all that's wide open, the Hughes gas gets a little bit nicer there. And I've used these before and had good luck. So if you're interested, there's that part number again. I'm going to lay them on my intake right now and see I'm how they trim this gasket to fit my intake. And it'll give me a little more ceiling space on top. And I may can even keep that second row of uh, Printo seal or whatever there. I kind of like that. It's, it's sharp and it, uh, it, I mean, sharp as in nice. And it does kind of give you that kind of silicone feel to it. So I'm going to trim it just right to match my intake. And we'll put this dude on. So there's what my gasket looks like trimmed. And... I've got it kind of taped in place, but basically you can see, I try to cut it right on to the very edge and just a little piece of tape there I can pull off in a minute. But when I drop my intake on, you're gonna see that red printed line right there is gonna be, excuse me, that top red printed line is going to be above the port. And that's just how it is. This The intake was taken out as far as I could possibly go with it. And I think it's actually Summit that says you can take it out the full size, but that would only leave you about, I don't know, maybe a 16th of an inch or less of gasket on that top side. So do as you wish. Um, I went ahead and trimmed down the floors too to make sure they were nice. So right now it's just hanging in place. Let me stick the intake on. So here's a little issue that you might wonder about. These are the Jegs brand uh mopar big block valve covers black finned and here's our little msd pro billet 
8545 for a low deck. And currently, it will not go in and work because it hits our cover right there. So I did talk to our owner and he's good with me clearancing the cover. I can take a black magic marker and uh, smear over where it's just raw aluminum on there. Nobody's ever gonna see it anyway, but he just said he didn't mind if, I, if it was distributor or cover and I feel like uh, I'd rather keep the nice billet piece nice and billet versus the cover and they kind of remind me made in california usa it's probably the exact same company that makes the mopar performance ones but they just don't say mopar performance on them it looks to be a pretty decent piece and also let me set that back there uh these are the 440 source valve cover rubber gaskets i've never used these i normally use the moroso blue ones but I kind of like these a little better. And they, they're a little bit thinner, which is nice. On my blue ones before, I've had them kind of rub the springs on the bottom. So that kind of gets you clearance away from that. And these do have a little metal core in them. If they get bent or something, they bend back. So that looks good. On the cover itself, it looks like I drew a line there. Uh, I'll take out that portion. It'll still give us... Mm, probably three sixteenths or so to still seal with there. So I'm going to get that ground out and get these covers on a uh, carburetor. So we got an AED coming for this. It should here should be here before dyno day. Right now I've got his. There we are. Uh, this is an ATM innovation. I'm not sure if they even still have that name anymore, but. It looks very similar to an AED. It's got the billet metering blocks and the billet base plate. And it looks like maybe their custom body instead of a Holly body. And it's an 850. So being a 512, uh, 6,500 RPM, I don't think this is really big enough, but AED's specking out their own version of an 850 for him. And I think they may call it an 850, but it, it, I bet it will outflow this one. So we have one as a base to start with. It looks nice and tall on there. Looks really good. Uh, let me get those final mocked up. I've got my single belt ordered to be able to run this thing on the run stand with his new pulleys. And we're pushing forward. As far as I know, it's ready to be bolted on the run stand. We got oil pressure. My belt will be here tomorrow. Uh... I'm going to go ahead and run it with his other uh, carburetor that we know is a known good carburetor. This is an E85 deal, so that'll be my first one of those. Distributor's in. You can fit a sheet of paper between it and the valve cover now. So all that looks nice. I got his studs ordered up. And we can get rid of our little bolts there. And otherwise, I'm hoping this will be a 700 horsepower 512 soon. Anyway, I appreciate y'all watching. I do have a dyno date scheduled. So I'll let you know whenever it pops up and we'll go test this thing out. If you'd like to take a guess in the comments, please feel free to, horsepower and torque. You don't have to give the RPM if you don't want to. Um, thank y'all for following along with the build. I got a complete playlist if you just started on this video for some reason. And yeah. Okay. people.